Welcome to Liberty Dad Podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. I'm your host, DL, and this episode is the last of the Libertarians on 25 issues. During this episode, Tub and I will wrap things up by discussing free trade and the Federal Reserve. If you're new to the show, Liberty represents the message of all your freedom all the time. Your dad represents the delivery recognizing that tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how I engage with him today and applying that to those around me. I'm taking the concept of a dad that can speak on many different topics and applying it to liberty. But speaking is not enough. It's important to be informed and speak in a manner that invites people to seek out your opinion in the future. This season, I'm joined by Libertarian City Council candidate Jerry Rohrbach, known to many as Pastor Tub or just Tub. Pastor Tub is a father of three and he shares the same vision that I do when it comes to communicating liberty, and that is to prepare for tomorrow's conversation today. The theme for this season of the Liberty Dad podcast, that's coming to a close by the way, is Libertarians on 25 Issues. Each episode focuses on one of 25 different issues, except for the last handful where we decided to merge them together. I got the idea from the book right here. Introduction to the Libertarian Party by Wes Benedict. In the next hour or so, you'll become more informed on how libertarians view free trade and the Federal Reserve. With that, let's dive right in. How you doing, Hey, Tub? that was quite the dramatic reading right there. Like, what was going on? Reading? That was all that was off all, the cuff. What are you talking I, about? I can see it. It's right there. There's no words on the screen? Right there. Right there. I see every one of Pay them. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> all right. So, hey, we're good. We've already had our conversations, our pre-conversations. Oh, you guys missed it. You, once again, one of those times we're going to record those. Remember the one time we did? Remember it got all thrown up? We had this long conversation. And right. We're like, whoa, no, no, no. Forget what we had planned. Let's go cover these things. Right. And, you know, I think and then they, we, we unremembered everything that we had said so we could say yep. it all again freshly. Yeah, I, I, yeah, and it doesn't. I mean, we got to the point. We got the, But I think that you lose something. I think that maybe one time we just click and go and we just let it fly wherever it goes is where it goes we should do that live that's the and then one. people can get on there and be like these two clowns this no no, no this, hope for no this, hope for these two there's no like hope no wonder they scripted that yeah no yeah no uh, you, you, well no wonder they had no wonder they had specific the book and, topics yeah, and they oh, were yes. like here's this book that we're going to follow because if we don't follow the book because well, we'd be talking crazy in our stuff. in our pre-conversation we do cover a number of things usually party type stuff party stuff whether it's local or right. national we're like boo hoo hoo the party they're so bad blah are you mocking me now no not at all well well i'm excited to have some gripes today yeah like i have gripes today today well you know well, actually here's the thing is usually when we have this time it's because right. you're catching me up Right. On the drama of the party, right, stuff right. I don't usually the gripes are related to drama. It's not like yes, it's just... but this time it was so, well. Was this drama? No, I don't think it was no, drama. No, no, no. Um, not talking about our local stuff. Talking about just from the national stuff. Yeah. It's kind of it's more of a where I'm really standing with some struggles with yeah, the party. Yeah, I, I mean it's just you know the party's going through changes. You know we're like in our teenage years, I guess. Even though we did it, even though we're fifty, we're fifty, mm -hmm. and we're like, hey, at fifty years old, shouldn't we have worked out some things by now? But maybe it's like you know. Maybe it's dog years or something like that, you know? Like yeah, this is not company. Every but seven years is actually gotta, one year, so we're only like seven. So we're seven years old? Right. Yeah, but, okay, then, then it's highly appropriate because we, in some ways, are right. acting like a bunch of seven-year-olds. So, but, um, you know, I think I think okay. the uh, I think the nature of the party, just let's kind of bring this back so we don't trash the party. Was, no, no, like I said, like... I, I we're on the film, and they're going to be like, ooh, the party is terrible. No, I don't okay. want to vote for that party. Uh but, but I think that well, you I, I don't think you're always going to agree. Like you should never right. agree with the whole party. Right. I don't care. I don't care right, if you're right. R or D or whatever you right. got. You should. There should always be something like. Oh. Right. 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 You know, because if you're willing to just walk in step and lock yeah. step with somebody, somebody's ideas are getting squashed. Oh yeah. So I mean... and, and now the, I think that maybe as libertarians we have too big of an area where we don't come together. And, you right. know, we don't. I think we don't find enough times where we find the things we agree on. Right. And we want to always focus on what right. we disagree on. Yeah, sometimes, I'm a little guilty of that sometimes. Sometimes like we today. focus on, you know, um, what we disagree on rather than finding the commonality. Like, oh yeah, don't forget that like 80% of stuff we agree on. Yes. And a lot of libertarians seem to forget that. We're like, well, what about that 20%? You know, it's like, what, how, what it's like an unfaithful husband, right? You know, uh, I was watching a Tyler Perry, sh uh, one of the Tyler Tyler Perry movies a long uh -huh. time ago, and I believe this. Is in, I believe it was this one where like these these uh, this couple, like like three couples, 
met together up in the mountains, like in, in the winter or something like right. that. And one of them was clearly cheating on his wife. I think he even brought his girlfriend or something. It was really weird. Well, that's just yeah, not smart at all. I know. Wow. Was, like, he brought the girlfriend and the wife showed up, like, later because, like, the Wait. girlfriend and him took the car and the other girl. Uh, I don't but know. But there's going to be other people out there and he was bringing. Yeah, it, it, was, just, it, was, okay. it was It was, it was yeah. bizarre. Right. So, but anyway, there was this interesting comment in there that said, uh, that talk about how, you know, men, they, they're getting 80% of what they're looking for out of their current marriage. Okay. But then they go looking for that for other 20%. 20. Mm -hmm. And then what ends up happening sometimes is that they they might get that 20%, whatever that is. And then, of course, the 80% lady it, that's finds gone. out and then it, she's, she's now done. You, now you she's only have gone. 20%. So now you only get the 20%. And sometimes that girl, you know, since she was only 20%, she wasn't really all that invest, invested in you in the first place. So then you get 0%, right? Uh, and then all the headaches that go with you know, having, they go with having cheated. And, and so I, see, I feel like sometimes the party can be similar to that. You know, we, we kind of looking for that 20% mm -hmm. and forgetting that we have this 80% that's already there. It's already present. Now, here's the thing. I think that the, the one thing that we were specifically speaking about, the one that I had issue about with the national party, well, some of the state party, um, it wasn't, to me, it's a, it's a big issue. Right. Like, it, it's not one of these little piddly things, you know, like, right, right, like right. okay, the thing we talked about locally, that was kind of piddly. We're, we're moving yeah. on. Um, but, the thing, the state and national party, I'm kind of like, this is a pretty big deal. Right. And, and I don't know, I don't think we're going to get into it. It's not our topic or anything. Right. But so, but I, so. It's not about me, money. Not about money. What? Money? Well, well, today is about free trade and Federal Reserve, which is basically money. Okay, well, go ahead. Start. Go. No, 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 no. I'm no. saying we're not. No, I'm do, agreeing no. with you. Do your lesson. I was agreeing with do you. Do what you got. Do, you, do your little show. <laughs> Let's lesson. go. Do your lesson. lesson. Let's go. No, I wasn't. I, I was saying it was like, you're right. We're not going to be getting into it in depth because it's not about money. No, it's not about money. So, but keep going. No, no, but I don't. I, but I don't want to get to it. But I think it's a big enough issue right. that it's time for me to start kind of questioning. Not, no, no, I'm making it. It's not right. We say that like, oh, I'm dipping out. I'm not dipping out. Right. But it's time for me to start saying, hey, wait a minute. Why aren't we paying attention to right. this? Right. And, and so, like I said, I, I'm willing to kind of um, make bigger stands on this one. Right. To kind, of, you know, it's not these little things. Oh, we got all this in common. Yeah, but this one thing is pretty big, and I don't think we can keep ignoring it. Sure, sure, yeah. And 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 this is what it means to be in a party. In a party, we all come together and we mm -hmm. say, hey. Um, I need to, you know, effectively, I need to have some representation because that's what we're here that's for. That's why we're here. We're yep. here to get representation for our views. Um, not everybody's going to get 100% representation. Right. In fact, most people and are probably, no, probably everyone is not going to get 100% representation. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mention the topic. We have to discuss it because if not, here's what I found. If you start leaving something vague out there, people will fill in gaps and they'll make stuff up. They'll make oh, something this. up. That's really oh, terrible. People. Yeah. So Just that's probably that. what it is. No, but you, you know what mine is? Mine is, is about when do we, as a party... Um, look, look to protect the freedoms of faith. Right. Like how, when, when do we get a little more focused on the idea that, you know what, we, we are the uh, party of freedom and protecting people's rights. That's mm -hmm. what we're all about. But it seems like we're straying a little bit from the idea of protecting the rights and the freedoms of people to, to kind of worship how they desire. Right. So there, we're just following up on other topics that we, it seems like as a party, we're making it more important and we're kind of, well, in my case, we're pushing the Christians aside. Mm -hmm. and, and the Christians, listen, the, the Christians are a big part of this country. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to get into what level of Christianity, but we're, the, they're a big part the of this real country. Ones, the not... real ones. Yeah, like the like the ones like me. You know, right. The libertarians like me are the real libertarians. The Christians right. like me are the real Christians. Stuff along those lines. The fathers like me are the real right. fathers. So, stuff, you, know. you know, not the Mormons, the, not the Catholics, not the how, uh, how far do you want to go with this conversation? I mean, where, where oh, are we well, going they they're Buddhists aren't Christians. They're, they're yeah. not even in the Christian but, name anyway yeah but uh, you know well you got you got the um, catholics don't not the who's the watchtower people that walk that's around jehovah witnesses. jehovah witnesses not jehovah witnesses they ain't witness anything anyway they, what they see never mind so but the, i'm I, teasing but, i'm if you're a jehovah witness i'm just teasing he may not be let's be very clear that's his name. i feel pretty confident there's probably not Jehovah Witnesses watching this. I have no idea. Uh, so all I'm saying is that, you know, Christians are there. Right. Christians are a large block of people. Right. And like I mentioned to you, Christians vote. Yeah, they do. And, and so once again, because I see libertarianism not just as this uh, kind of psych group that sits around we complain about things like along those lines. It's right. not just philosophical. To me, it's a political party. And in a political party, you want to kind of bring people into your party with right. things that you have. And so that's kind of where I'm right. at with that one. Now, go to your little free trade list. So basically, folks... We're coming for you. You're religious. I am, but for different That's reasons. <laughs> like, like I really. I, mean, I wanted to make it sound like, ominous. You know? Yeah, like, well, like, well, well no, I, but I am. But no, what you're. What does he mean by that? I'm agree with you that if if we are listen as a Christian man, right. I am coming after you. Now I will say this: you said that no um, 
uh, no Jehovah Witnesses are listening. That's probably true. Um, there might actually be uh, some uh, Mormons. Mormons, because I know like several of them. Right. It's kind of weird. like I know more Mormons uh -huh. since I've joined the party. For real? Than before. Okay. Like, like I, I just... knew one. Now I know like three. I think. And, and so like I, I didn't know that one you know, kind of dominant person here in the state. I didn't realize until just recently that he was a Mormon. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. So it's kind of wild. And but then, listen, you, we're not, listen, you don't want to have that conversation with me. And, and that's when, I went, Utah, uh -huh. when oh. I went to Utah, oh, like, and I walked into their convention, I could just feel the Mormonness. Mormon, the Mormonness that we're going yeah. with? The Mormon. Yeah. No, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know. Mormon ish. <laughs> Morning. So, all right. Yeah, do, so today, do, do your free trade. So thing. now my segue here into the that's, conversation. That's a very is, bad uh, segue. Yeah, well, that's very, why people watch it. it They're like, very, oh, very I laugh at this guy. Yeah. Let's just clip this part out. And be like, you, Look but how you dumb say that. Guy. You don't clip anything. Like, you don't, right? You just. I, I try I to sometimes to, go back and clip them. You know what? Not, not right now, he, now, I'm going to tell you this right now. I don't watch any of these that yeah, we do. I don't. Well, I sort of do a little bit. You have to kind of. Yes. Because it's the same way, like, for our church services stuff. I never. Right. And my wife, sometimes she'll want to put it on while I'm around and she's learning to put her headset in because I don't want to hear it. I, right. I don't, I don't, because right. you know what I do? I, I, I'm too critical on myself. Right. And you start getting too critical on yourself. You start hearing, you start kind of right. actively overthinking it. So I just kind of right. like, this is where I am. I think the jacked up mess that it is. Yeah. I think, uh, I, I think when you're doing a st conversation style like this, mm -hmm. probably better off not doing so. Okay. Just because like you're going to be more natural probably. Right. And so, like, you want to just be natural. That's who I am. You know, um, if you're doing a more monologue style where you're trying to deliver in a particular way, then you might need to so you can see, like, hey, am I am I delivering in the way and, I think I am? And, and you know you know what? For me, like, I, I will um, – sometimes I'll mute it mm -hmm. and watch. Right. Because sometimes it's those type of things that can distract people. Right. Um, when, when, I, when I was in the church and there was a pastor that – yes. And you know what he said? Because I do that a lot. I do a lot of this – um, no matter what, I do it here. In fact, if we were, if we didn't have all of this around me, I'd be even bigger. I'd be doing this all the time. So, but uh, one time As we were a sign of dominance. Yes. So understand. Remember back. Remember, did you ever have? Can I do this to you? Remember back in the day they would do this to you if you walked up to somebody that was like the rudest thing they could do. To, you don't remember that? No. Like that was like the root. Like shut I up. mean, nobody did that to me because they oh, knew yeah. I was a stone cold killer. Killer. That's right too. So you. Just... Even though I barely said cold, I was like code. Like if you go back and listen to it, I just know I said that <laughs> awkwardly. I, I just, anyway, I feel like I try. You try. I just want to make this very clear. I try to keep this things moving. Try it's, to keep the people entertained in a direction. And then in turn, you come in on your show and you do all of these things. <laughs> so anyway, real quick though, because I I will watch for this because mm -hmm. that pastor I was talking about. So he said I was talking to him at the church one day. It was a pretty big church we were in, and he was um. He's like, hey, did you notice something? I said, what? He goes, you didn't notice I kept doing this. I said, oh, you know, it was my pants were too big. I forgot my belt. And he, and but he was sitting. No, he was standing. Oh, oh. Okay, so he's okay. standing, and he really, he kept kind of pulling his pants a little bit without trying to just yank, you know. And, and it's things like that that people right. will pick up on, and then they'll get distracted by it. So mm -hmm. you got to kind of learn to do right. those things. So sometimes I might not listen, but I'll watch and see if right. I'm doing something that kind of throws things off a little bit. Gotcha. And okay. here I just use my words and my emotions to turn. We everything try to off. teach our son to use your his words, so that's good. That's I good. appreciate oh, you good. using your words. I use my words, but not saying here. I use my hands. I use my emotions and my words to turn people away. I gotcha. So uh, listen, I, I, I'm all using all of my skills to ruin your audience. Hey, break it all out, right? Hey, but you listen, know? your cool. audience can start growing again after today. Maybe, maybe, after today. maybe. I'll, go back I, to growth I think again. I've got like 158 subscribers. Is that good or bad? I mean, it depends on what you're comparing it to. If you're comparing Tom Woods me, has how many? Uh, too many. Too many? Is yeah. that what it says when you like, look up his thing? It says just it, too it many. It says too many. It's you know who when, has more. Oh, no, actually, I bet I know the answer to that. I was gonna say Joe Rogan or Tom Woods. I'm guessing well, Joe, Joe Rogan, Rogan does. Joe yeah. Rogan does because he's got he's not the libertarian niche, right? So he's got way more. Um, he's got too many as well. Both of them, they they need to both understand. And Tom Woods, if you ever listened to it, he'd probably be upset by hearing this. But yeah, they, I'm sure he's going to hear about this. They okay. need to understand that, um, you know, from those that have to those that need. From those that have to those that need. Yeah. Okay. You're so going to explain had, that on the term of podcast, aren't you? Oh, that, that's like a Marxist comment. Like, okay. from each according to his no, ability. No, yes, I, got, okay. I, I summarize it. Oh, that's what I'm like. like I'm so like, okay. It's kind of the same, same way of saying, yes. like, from each according to his ability to each according to his needs. Need. Like, yep. Those that have the, to those that need, right? So they need to, you know. He could throw a little something your way. I mean, basically, he needs to say, look, like, here's some, some viewers, some listeners. You know, why is there not, like, why is there not more of that? Why is there not more of 
hey, you know what? Like, are they threatened? Or uh, uh, well, you say, what do you mean by that? Hey, let me show you. Let, let more, me say more this specifically. Like, more of the hey, go check this guy out. Oh, that happens. Uh, like, oh yeah, yeah. It, in the podcast community, it does happen. Yeah. Okay, so when Tom mm-hmm. Woods goes, say, hey, listen, go uh, check out. DM. He's monetized it, I think. So, like, oh. if you if you sign up through his like web page and get a web page yeah. for this thing, then he'll give your you know he'll say he'll, he'll send you but, a shot. But also then. sometimes he'll bring people on, okay. and and you know, um, and he'll say, oh yeah, check out this podcast, you know, or this person or whatever. So he'll he'll bring people on and then direct people to go check them out. But does, it, not, does he know. ever like th- just throw out random right, posts to people like, hey, you know, hey, by the way, I was listening uh, to. Not that I'm aware of. Okay, but right. uh, you know, I'm also that's I, I think it's his bread and butter, so it'd be kind of weird to be like. Imagine if you're yeah, Walmart, what, and you're but, like, but, but hey, have you checked out the the the, the mom over box? Target? <laughs> yeah, yeah have right. you checked out Target. Yeah, yeah, but no, but what I'm saying though is, imagine imagine what that could do for somebody like for your show, right? So just kind of like, hey, you know, there's this kind of you need right. you probably go check that out. But it it does happen. So like, there's uh, there's a fellow that reviews podcasts. That's, okay, his podcast is it's review three, podcast. Okay, and so he'll review them and be like, hey, I, this week I'm reviewing the, you know this episode. Can you send something into this guy? And be like, hey. No, he just picks just it up. Just random ones. Yeah. Okay. And and I think it's I think it's generally understood in the podcast community that it's poor form to try to invite yourself on somebody else's podcast. Okay, because because I I've I never asked to be on somebody's podcast. I'm with ever. you in that one. Like I you don't. Um, I, I've had I've had well, we've had this talk a little bit. Right. I've had people ask me, and I'll be kind of like, well, you know, and 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 sometimes you got to weigh out time and scheduling versus right. audience and stuff along those lines. But I never want to be the one. Hey, dude, why don't you put me on your show? Yeah. Like, I, like I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I think it's poor form. I won't do it. Um, when other people will sometimes like, it's not poor form for somebody to do it on your behalf necessarily. Okay. Yeah. You know, like it, cause sometimes someone will say like, Hey, who should I have on my show to talk about this? And some people will go, Oh, have so-and-so on there. there and, and it might be somebody from another podcast. Did somebody, the guy pitch your wife? Like if, if I say, if I told my wife, Hey, right. well, look at this. He said, put so, my name in there. Is, is that um, bad? Then? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? I, I, yeah, I, I, not pro- do that? I probably wouldn't do that. All right, fair enough. Okay. Um, and I've All had right. people, I've had people suggest me for things. Yeah. And, um, when they like when they suggest me, I either just you know quietly give a like or. That, it, I, I actually, I think it's all I do. Does it, I think does it depend on whether you want to be on that show or not? No, no, like, no. Do, 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 no. Well, I'll so like I, this because I like to, this show, to, but to me, or I the feel, one you really want to be on, you comment. On. I, I've no, I always feel like it's it's humbling that somebody yes. else would say, "Hey, I think DL should be on your show for whatever it is mm-hmm. I'm talking about." Right. Like you, you, it, no matter how obvious it might seem that I'm the right person for it, right. I think it's humbling. So I <laughs> hold on. So, well, I mean, no matter how obvious some, it might seem that I'm people, the right person, some for some people it, have it's suggested humbling. me for podcasts, and I'm like, I don't know if I'm really the right guy for that one. I'm okay, like, right. and then other ones, I'm like, yeah, I could totally do that. Okay. That's what I mean. Like you know, so some should, are more on. fitting. So should I have more people reaching out to me about podcasts and stuff? Because remember, the whole podcast thing is all kind of new and foreign to me. Uh, so what it was? Because Larry Sharp was pretty clear about like, dude, get on all of them. Yeah, but. Just, but then I can't invite myself, so no, I wouldn't. So I sit I mean, here with you. No, I wouldn't. I would never. So yeah. I just sit here with you, basically. Just, just sit here. I mean, I just sit here with you. <laughs> if you have a podcast, you probably should have on Trash to Tug or just a subliminal message. I'll play it backward later. I, I'm not exactly sure what you just said right there. <laughs> so if anybody knows, can you do me a favor when this comes up? Can you post the thing out there? You say, hey, here's what DL was saying because I got no idea. Uh, All right, you gonna do your free trade thing? All right, where are we at time here? Um, we're, let's see. We're not gonna. We no, listen, are, we gotta finish. Today, oh, we are at twenty minutes, so yeah, we're we we're finish. right up on time to to switch over to the conversation. So Perfect. Here we okay, are. go ahead. Bam, right there on the screen. If you can see it and if you can read, hopefully you can. If not, I'm gonna tell you there's a different podcast out there for that. This is free trade, and here's what the book says. So remember, everybody, in this book, chapter three, he goes through about 25 different topics, technically 26, but that's a different that's a different conversation. And he just gives a quick blurb about it. And then we go through and we talk about it a little bit more. So in this particular case, we're talking about free trade, and then we'll get to the Federal Reserve. So here's what he says. People have the right to trade with each other, and international, tr- international free trade benefits everyone involved even if other countries refuse to trade freely. America is still better off. It is still better off. Okay, guys, I think I misspelled off. Better Come off on. unilaterally practicing free trade and eliminating tariffs, quotas, and other trade barriers. All right, so I know you got notes because I can see- I have very got, like, few. You know, got, the, the, like, look, all, look how small that free trade section is. But there's a lot of letters there. Yeah, but I don't even know if they're real words. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's just been me typing stuff. I got like, you. I, Never mind. So, so free Cause... trade. What you got? Let's let's lead into it. Okay. Well, what I because remember I had these notes from was it two weeks ago or something like uh, that or whenever we were going to yeah. do it. Okay. All right. So inside of this, um, 
I look at it, I go, okay, so do we, ex- mind your business, dude, listen, don't, don't you worry, listen, if I want to cover, I'm going to cover, you can work off the work that I've done, you don't get to just kind of, no, I'm going to bring up that point, um, all right, okay, so here's what I have, um, taking the concept that's in the book, and it does say international stuff along those lines, all right, um, should we be open to extending that concept? Should it extend to the fact that states in India, like Florida, could trade with a foreign country? I think so. Okay. I have no, I don't, I don't see why not. Because ultimately, to me, I, I look at it and I say, all it is is people trading with people. That's what it is. Okay. You know, I might have a business. Maybe it's a million dollar business, and I want to trade with your million dollar business. Mm-hmm. You know, we want to. Um, maybe I want to buy supplies from you so that I can create whatever I'm doing, right? I'm, I'm buying, you know, you're the manufacturer, I'm the, I, uh, you know. You I make the, a part of the widget that goes into your right, machine. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And so, but you're based in another country and I'm based in Florida. I should be able to contact you and say, hey, Tub, what kind of deal can we make here, right? And then okay. you can say, this is the kind of deal. And I can say, all right, that's a great deal. Let's do it. We shake hands, you know, and then we conduct business. And, and we are two individuals, even if we both own million dollar companies okay. and have lots of employees. All right. So then um, with that, then you're talking about still removing all tariffs or anything along those lines. Yes. Uh, so it's just a straight back and forth system. Yeah. Okay. So now what if this is no longer a deal about I need parts from you to finish my product or whatever that is? What if it's a, hey, you know what? Florida is producing um, these uh, pink flamingos that go in your yard. Right. <laughs> because you ever notice that's what Florida's known for yet? I've never seen one in somebody's yard. I didn't know we were known for pink flamingos. Yeah, those little plastic. Things. I know what they are. I just didn't know that we were known for them, and Outside I have not of seen one. Outside, there's never been one. That's what I'm saying. The only place I've ever seen them is Zoo. Anyway, so here's my point. So imagine if you say, okay, this is what we have, and they want them over there, and I'm not going to go through like the U.S. state federal version, if that makes sense. Right. I just want to go. We're going to do this. We're going to figure right. this out, and I'm going to go across. Yes. And, and this is so we're open to that also. I am. I okay. don't. Why not? Why wouldn't we be? Uh, listen, I'm not. No, I'm not disagreeing with it. I well, no, I mean, here. I think that's the question we have yeah. to ask, you know, and maybe we can ask that question and try to answer it a little bit. Like, why wouldn't we be? What are, what what are, the, what are the risks right. to doing that? It, like, is there something right. that does come in? Is there something that we look at and I, go, here's I think, a hindrance? I think a lot of people tend to look at it and say, if we don't have free, we don't have some sort of rules, boundaries or whatever, uh-huh. then other people will take advantage of us. Okay. I think that's the big concern. So a lot of people- we've seen that. So it's, There's so, been a history so, of that. So it's kind of retaliatory in a mm-hmm. sense, like, oh, China's- you know, charging us, we should charge them, yep. you know, and, um, but it doesn't work because we're all still charging each other now, in some ways. Right. Yeah. But don't, like don't, those are still there. There, there was they don't a, really work. There was a level where I was questioning. I'm like, well, you know, it's kind of a valid point. Okay. In the sense that they import a car and we pay 22%. We import a car. We pay, they pay two. Like, you do have to kind of look at that and go, wait a minute, when do we start to kind of try to find a way to balance this out a little bit? Is it, maybe the really best answer is get rid of all of them. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? So that way there, none of it, you get rid of the tariffs, I mean, not the trades. Right. Get rid of the tariffs. Right. Then we all just kind of work on this playing field. Right. Or do tariffs have their place in that we kind of hold countries in check? Right. That, hey, with this country, we can work out this deal at 2%. This country, we can work it out at 12. Right. You know, is, do tariffs well, have their, their space so- in international trade or no? I am no international economist. That's why I'm asking okay? questions instead of giving answers. However, just my general reasoning on this matter will say, let's let's assume you're, let's you assume you're China. I'm um, who? What? China. Oh, you're China. I was trying to do the Trump thing, you know, China. 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 It's, it's, China. it's pronounced China. I don't know. I don't know how <laughs> he does it. Whatever. Anyway, okay. anyway, so you're China. I'm the U.S. Okay. okay. And then I say, why do I have to be China? Well, because I don't okay. know. Can I be the U.S.? I mean, I don't know. Just go. Anyway, so let's okay. say that you are like, hey, DL, if you want to sell stuff here, extra tax. Okay. And this I say, and then I say, okay, well, you can still sell stuff here with no tax, right? So it sounds like a bad deal, but the Americans are getting cheaper stuff still mm-hmm. from China. Yep. Right, so, so we're still we we're still we're still getting stuff. Mm-hmm. Now, what about the question of selling stuff? Well, the way I look at any transaction, let's see here. So I've got this book here. Let's just say that I have this book and I want to sell it to you for five dollars. Okay. Okay. So here's the question I ask people: What? It, why? Why might you pay five dollars for this book? What would be the reason if you did? It has to have some value to me. It has to be worth that five dollars. I want okay. what's inside of that. Okay. I'm going to disagree with you on that. It's, oh, doesn't it doesn't have to have value to me? 
I'm going to say that the reason that you would pay $5 for this book mm -hmm. is because you feel better off having the book than the $5. Isn't that what I just said? No, you said have it. It's it has worth, value to you me. Said, well, you did say value, but you said it's worth $5. I, I don't think that... For me, it's worth. I think it's worth more than $5. Now, if I'm not because, willing to pay it. No, no, no. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen. You give me $5, you want this more than you want your $5. $5. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's worth more than $5 to you. It could be $5.01. You could be like, haha, I'm one... We don't we, we don't really think in terms of exactly how much better off we are right. in a dollar amount. But I tend to say the reason you would sell this to you, you would pay this five dollars to me is because you look at it and say, I am better off with the five with the book than I am five, the five dollars. So therefore you want this more than the five dollars. So it's more valuable to you. Reverse is with me. I'm willing to take your five bucks because I want the five dollars more than the book. Mm -hmm. So effectively, I might be looking at it and say, to me, the book is worth $4.99. You might be looking at it and saying it's worth $5.01. And so the $5 is the, where we land on that equilibrium of a trade. Mm -hmm. And then, so I I you uh, I, we, yeah, I give you the book, you give me the money. We agreed to terms. And then that... we both walk away feeling better off having mm -hmm. made the trade than had we not. Okay. That's the reason why I, uh, that's the reason why I say, even if China is saying you have to pay this tax to us, if our businesses choose to pay the tax, That's on them. then what they're saying is the tax and whatever I'm selling this for, I am better off getting that, you know, getting the getting money. Getting it here. Uh huh. I'm better off with whatever I make in the, in the ultimate transaction than I am not having done it at all. Okay. So it, to me, we still benefit so, so then, if somebody willingly makes a trade. So then that concept could still move in the idea that says, okay, that now we have six companies in Florida who are selling pink flamingos. Right. Because um, I'm sticking with Let's my do example. It. Okay. And, and now each one of those companies can make their own deal with China mm -hmm. to say, hey, listen, and, and maybe China, maybe that company doesn't go, man, I didn't realize I got it for six bucks. I'm right. paying eight. That's right. the reality of it. And, right. and that's where, and, and that's where your free trade comes in. Hey, what is this worth to me? Right. What am I willing to pay? What can I do? Maybe I'm willing to cut it. And you're right. saying then it just opens it up. Right. Everybody has an individual contract yes. with whoever it is they're trying yep. to deal with and whatever they do with it, whether one company yes. wants to make 50 cents off of their pink flamingo and another one makes a dollar. Right. It's entirely because up to them. you and I may both be American companies mm -hmm. and we may okay, want to be American now. Yay. Sweet. All right. So then you, uh, then we both go, we approach China and we say, Hey, we want to sell our goods in China. Maybe we're selling relatively similar things, mm -hmm. but for you, the uh, the thing that you're selling that's similar to mine, that may not be your bread and butter. That may just be like half. It's, it's a secondary right? product. It's for a us. secondary product, mm -hmm. whatever. And it may be my my. So for you, uh, the the tolerance of the uh, you, you know what what the, you're willing to accept is different than yeah, what I'm because be I might willing be looking at saying, hey, listen, I'm willing to make less off of this because right. I really want to gear people right. in towards my other product. Right. Mm -hmm. So I might I might say. Well, it's worth it if I'm going to sell a million units over there. And you might say, it's worth it if I sell a half a million units, you know? And we might end up making the same amount of money. Right. We might mm -hmm. make the same amount of money, but it's going to be worth different. It's going to be worth, uh, uh, it, the because, value to each of us is going to be different. Because ultimately my company is making the smaller pink flamingos. Right. The, so you got the pink right. flamingo family. Yes. And so you're only selling the other one. So if right. I can get you in or you can be here, but I really want to get to buy my small ones. Right. That's, yeah, I mean, okay. and, and there's any number of variations that happen, and that's how the free market works, right? Okay. The free market works by saying, you know, like, hey, um, I don't know how many times you've heard this somebody ask, not maybe you particularly, but they'll say, hey, is there a hardback oh. version of this? Mm -hmm. People like a hardback, yeah. right? It's the same book, same product, effectively, mm -hmm. you know, because ultimately it's got the same words in it, you know, and same number of pages, but it just may be a hardback. And so one you know, one person might value it differently. So they may not, one person might say $5 for the paperback and the other person might say $10 for the, uh, for the, for the I've decided that's what I'm willing to, pay. right. Because this and, is my preference. Right. And, and it's funny because you use it and, I, and I'll give you a real life example of this. So I have a number of Bibles, obviously. And so I, I have, I didn't know that it was obvious, but okay. No, it's obvious because I, okay. I care about Jesus. You should try it sometime. And so inside of that, I have a number of Bibles and here's what's funny. Nice it, you know, you ain't got one over there. You heathen. I, I use online. And so, um, no, yours that look like Bibles are Robert's Rules of Order because you're that kind of dork. I got All right. It. So, what, it's never gonna look at what else you got over there. I got Carl Sagan over there. But I do see that one. All right. So, but anyway, so I'm talking about my Bible. Can you okay. give me a second here? See, look, you're, you're the party. You're just the party. So, inside of that, Quick here's what I'm saying matter. is that I have I, I have an ESV Bible and they're the thin line. This in, in the you church. You don't even world. use KGV, KJV? No. no. 
So I mean, I had a real Christian. Uh, <laughs> see, I'm out. Actually, you believe there's I would have accepted NIV, but no, you will not. We will never accept the NIV. No, I didn't say we. I said I. The, see, I is what matters. That's what he. Means. All right. So inside of this, here's what I have. I uh -huh. have two, and they're the exact. Same, they're the exact same size. Where right. everything about it's the exact same number of pages. If I go to this page and here, is this page and that one, same right. one. The covers are different. Mm. I have one that's just a very basic. I kind of keep it in my truck. It's there. And then right. I have a couple like good leather ones. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? So I paid right. way up for that leather cover right. because I decided that's what I want. Right. And I'm willing to pay for it. Yep. And I think that that goes with free trade. No matter what it is, if somebody's willing to pay that price for it, that's what's good for them. Right. And they and they decided that whatever the price that they're willing to pay is uh, is a is a dollar value that they they would where they would prefer to have the item versus their money. Yeah. Yep. Right. And you could go into all kind of variations with your Bibles. Right. So there are Bibles with people's names printed on them. Yep. You know, they're uh, different colors, uh, maybe different, you know, designs or something yeah. like, you know, etched in them or something mm -hmm. like that. You, you know, so there's all these these variations and we haven't even discussed the translations, know, the, the translations, mm -hmm. you know. Um, any of that stuff, but just just variations where yeah. somebody might say, you know what? Um, like I could totally go in my truck right now and bring you in two of the. We can turn to the same page. I can totally do it right now. Not necessary. You, you, you want me? To, I, no, I will. I'll, I'll, I'll go do it right now. It, you know what? If you come back, bring a concordance. You want me? Oh, Strong's I have one concordance. in my office. Strong concordance. You know okay. I have one, dude. Okay. You know I have. I'm just. I was trying to pull a fast one on you. No, like, you know I have. Do so you have it in your car though? No, it's not. Ah, see, I'm winning. I'm winning. Oh, so you know what? Next time I come around, I'll be like. Here's your strong. So what are we looking up, like, brother? Bam. That's what it is. It's big Huge. and white. It's big and white. Huge. I, it's just so, <laughs> okay. Here so, you. So I used, I grew up with my. So I told you that you know my family was heavily evangelical, mm -hmm. and so in the church we would like literally open up our Bible and then open up our strong concordance. Are you and serious? Like, and we'd be like, "What's that word? Okay, go flip to eight nine nine eight and you flip what, it. What, and what church was it. this? Um, just a bunch of them. We we just did, well some of it was like. Uh, in home Bible studies at oh, yeah. people's houses, All right, yeah. and then so it wasn't really the church so much. It was, oh, okay. I mean, it was. You got me a little excited there for a second. I'm like, wait, 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 wait where's no, the no, church we, at? We didn't really. It wasn't really something. But Bible that was study practice to the churches. It was more like in home Bible studies yeah. where you would go yeah. to someone's house. Yeah. And it was somebody who was like, I, you know, just I leave one of those on Monday. Night. So no, I mean, like a person that was like smart about Bible and stuff. And let's try this again. I leave one of those on Monday night. <laughs> So anyway, every day we're talking about. Uh, so, all right, uh, let's so, so I think I think the essence of free trade is allowing people to to make um, exchanges based on what they perceive to be a value. And so what that China might charge us, we don't have to trade there. Yeah, we. If can, I'm a business, I can be like another charge me. Says, Wait a I can do that. I can do it cheaper than that. Right. I'll come to make this deal. I can go you. to Australia, and Australia's not charged me. You know, a ten mm -hmm. a, a ten percent on on every dollar tax or whatever. You know, the, uh, ten cent on every dollar tax. They're not charging me that, so I'll just go to to Australia, and then nobody. I, I don't want to trade in China, right? Or I might say, you know what? It's worth it to me to get over there because China's a huge market. They got a bazillion hundred million people, and so I'm going to go over there and try to capitalize on it. And the cost to me is still going to uh, make gonna me better it. off than than not having done yep. it. I got so nothing. I, I, listen, I, I don't know if you know this. I've already gotten a real. I think it's. My, I, I think free trade. trade area. It's I think simple, free really. trade is really that simple. Mm -hmm. You know, and whenever we start talking about tariffs and quotas and trade barriers and all that, I think it's really just uh, effectively amounts to a vendetta. We're, we're just trying to get it's, even with somebody. We're just trying to, you know, or, I, in, my, or, in my notes, I put it as punishment. Isn't or we're punishment? trying to bully somebody. Yeah. You know, we're like, oh well, you you know, and 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 let's think about this though. It's good for Americans because I know that there's this big idea of like buy American. Right. And I, I'm sympathetic to it. Mm -hmm. It's it's a cool idea. However, I know that Americans are not always good at everything, right? Because sometimes somebody else has figured something out that hasn't caught up over here. Yep. You know, uh, once upon a time, America had all their things that they, you know, like we were some of the, well, maybe it was more Europeans, but I think we really started dominating the firearm market for a while, okay. right? Yeah. You know, and so, you know, Smith and Wesson and all these you know, companies that started, mm -hmm. you know, I, I believe started here in the United States and became the dominant force in the firearms market. Right. And so then we were selling them to like Japan and, all this, you know, all these other places, you know, like in Last Samurai, you know, they were selling them guns and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. To totally yeah, historical. Yeah. <laughs> totally yeah. not. I would go but, by that. But uh, but but the, but the point is the same, right? That there is this division of labor and that some 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 people have somewhere have figured something out where well, you could break it down even further. You could say, hey. You know, there are multiple co companies that produce um, uh, soda bottles, right? Let's just say they, they create them why here in the we, US. Why are we using so many different... Go back to my pink flamingos. Why do you keep okay, changing so, our, so keep pink changing flamingos. our example so, of? Okay. So maybe, maybe California is like, hey, we got somebody there that's 
that's making paint flamingos. It's hard to but, say, isn't it? <laughs> but they're they're not very good at doing it. Right. And Florida is. Mm -hmm. And it's probably because, you know, for whatever reason, we've come up with an, a particular idea mm -hmm. or somebody has here in Florida uh, that helps we them. Can, process them faster. Process them faster, right? Yep. You know, they figured out a way to, to get the paint on them quicker, you mm -hmm. know, and, and maybe the people out in California haven't yet figured it out. Which wouldn't be a surprise. But then over in California, there's something that they've got figured out that people in Washington haven't figured oh, out. Oh, there we go. Okay, all right, fair enough. <laughs> right? And so you get this spread out of people that come up with the best ideas. And sometimes it's a matter of the uh, the area. So like yeah. in, in uh, vineyards are very popular in California. Mm -hmm. You're not going to find too many vineyards in like Indiana. No. Right, just okay. because the weather just doesn't, mm -hmm. th 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 it's not suitable for it. I mean, there might be one or two that get a, I don't know, I, I, I'm not saying there's none, but <laughs> you, you're not going to go to Indiana for, yeah, hey, to, to we're, start a we're going on a wine tour. Oh, right. in Indiana, right? right, right. <laughs> you're going to the Indiana right. one? Right. <laughs> uh -huh. So, uh, it, it, so this is the nature of, of business and ideas and competition is that when it's spread out, mm -hmm. then the the uh different people can work on different ideas that bring it to the market and compete and and I, and I think that for me is probably with all of this it's it's always about cost right it's always who can make this who can get the product that i want right. for the best price possible right and i think and, you start cutting out all of this stuff yep you have a better yep. chance of it. And, and and it's basically a macrocosm of what you might see between two gas stations here mm -hmm. in town Maybe not two gas stations, but you know, two two companies here in town that are providing a service or a good, and then it's a competition between those to try to provide it. At a we covered that product. when we were doing we were yep. covering trash collection yep. and stuff like that. Yep. yep. And and our go, regulation go check out that, go, yeah, our go, regulation episode. Please like go look at that those, episode. Yeah, a lot of those same ideas are going to apply to this, to this. just on a gr greater yep. scale. That's all. Okay. So I think we've covered. Oh, look at that time's going Did well. You, we we've covered um, free trade, and so now we can talk about. The Federal Reserve. You have no intro now? You have no... You have no yeah, yeah, we're going to get to it. Well, I got the little... Do you have an intro? I, I, no, I, got, I mean, are you just... Like, do we get, like, video graphics or do we get nothing? Mm, we just get to... So we're I... We're going to change the I, verbiage on the screen? I, yeah, we're going to change the verbiage on the screen. Okay. And I did see a video. I watched part of a video. Okay. On the Federal Reserve. It was the guy that wrote the book, um, uh, The Creature at Jekyll Island. Oh, okay. So he wrote the book and he gave a talk. It was like... It's like 20 years ago. Like, this is how old the talk is. The talk is so old that when he starts out, he said, we're going to be doing this in two parts because there's only so much tape. He said, yeah, yeah, okay, yep, so. And they ha will have to stop so they can change tapes. Okay. And then we'll start again. So okay. he made, he's like making this little joke about it. And I'm like, wow, that is really old. And you know, some kids are listening and go, what's he talking about? They're like tape, what? like duct tape. tape? Right, that's right, exactly. Okay. So, All right, so, so you're going to read so his stuff? For, for you, you don't have it on screen there. You have the you, wrong thing on screen. Is it not millennials, right? It's, is it I, no, you know, we had this conversation the other night. We're trying to figure out where everybody fits in. Who is I still Who's after millennials? It. It's the Z, Z? generation? The Z peoples? Yeah, I think it's the Z. The Z people. Okay, so you Z people out there, once upon a time, we didn't just have devices that had gigabytes and gigabytes of space that you could just record and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you actually, you actually had like a tape, a tape and it rolled yep. and then it rolled from one side to the other. And it would come unraveled when it and got then, stuck in the thing and you take yep. it out, take your pencil or try yep. to do it with your finger. Yep. And, just and then sometimes your tape this for every recorder would eat it eat and then you pull thing. the tape and, out and it would be all chewed up. And then you get well, mad why? and throw it and say all kind of words your that's mom what didn't I was want just, you to say. Why? Well, that's what I was just saying. I was just saying that, but what you had to say it differently to I'm make it more effective. That's exactly what I was just saying. I was saying. saying it more better. No, you clearly weren't when you went with more better. So I'm, I'm it, just saying, you know, in, in the competition is like free trade, right? Like whose you know voice, what? This is whose this, voice wins out. This right? is our last. And episode. my voice won out. This is our last. I'm sorry that you couldn't in free compete. trade in, in free you trade. Couldn't compete was, in the market there. in this 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 sphere, right? Here. And if I can't compete in this market, I know I'm trying. So. Like there's a lot of things to shut down. So listen, this is why this is our last episode. Uh -huh. this, we finally come to the point where we go, you know what? We're going to choke each other. We're at the I guess this, this is where we're at. We're gonna, And you realize we're ending it with free with uh, Federal Reserve. I can prevent you from choking me. How? I am a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I don't go back and watch it. Because it's bad enough living through it. I don't want to relive it through videos. And if you were, If you were going to... It's and, and look and, and the thing is look what that's doing to you right now. Like you, you look you cannot function right now. Like you're done. 
<laughs> I'm so amused by that. Do you you know. understand that your three year old would look at you and go, Dad, really? <laughs> like, for real? <laughs> Dad, I thought you were That's... professional. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think no. No, why? You don't understand. Your boy's going to be watching these one day. Maybe. Like, my kids are grown, so they've already learned how to they deal may, with Maybe me. they will watch him. All, All right, right, what are you going to so do? The Federal Reserve. So let's switch over. We'll read Please what he has over. here in the uh, 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 on the Federal Reserve, and then we'll discuss about it a little bit. So he says, libertarians don't like the Fed and want to get rid of it. It has the power to manipulate currency supplies and interest rates and often cause inflation. Libertarians support a free market in currencies. All right, do you have any notes at all? Oh, I do indeed. Do now, you really? I, I do. I thought you did. I thought you didn't. I'm sorry. I'm not bad. I, I was like, that's weird. When you, you, I, you, I thought you joked a moment ago that you didn't have well, any. I got graphics. Good Lord, son. Look what I did. And now here's the problem. Okay, so here's what I want to do. So last. Can you say good Lord to a pastor? I don't know. I'm just. Goodness sake. Listen, I'm, I'm just another guy. I'm a better guy than you, but I'm just another one. Ish. Okay. No, I'm not. So here's, here's what happened. All right. So like I, I was studying up. Mm-hmm. Because we've had this conversation, and we're like, you right. know what? We probably don't know enough about the federal. I think we both have kind of agreed on that. We're kind of like, you know, we're kind of like, I get the problems with it, but we didn't kind of. So this is actually what I put on Facebook last night. I <laughs> says, you ever do a deeper study into a particular topic and realize it's even more jacked up than you thought? I said, if not, and you feel you're missing out, then try researching the Federal Reserve. Right. Okay. Oh, did, you get any, did you get any cool comments? Um, oh yeah, yes, it's libertarian. So of course. Oh, they're all like, dude, bro, you and, gotta and like read said, this book. You I put this on this video. late. No, nobody actually, you know, sorry, nobody recommended a book. Oh, really? They were just kind of like, oh, here's this, here's this. They're, they yeah. want libertarians. Then. Oh, they're not real libertarians. Libertarians are always like, dude, you need to read this book. You're like, hey, what about this topic? And they're like, you need to read a book. A book, yeah. And no. I'm like, like, you can't now, tell me in five minutes. Because here's read what a book. Happens. Like, like I, like right now, I'll go from site to site to page to page and find out all different things, like kind of what I'm looking for. And, 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 and here's what I did find. There, this is an actual quote from one of the articles I read, and this just sums up beautifully. Millions of Americans are waking up to the fact that the Federal Reserve is bad, but very few of them can coherently explain why this is true. Right. It is a mess. And I, I am a big advocate of, if you're trying to find out about something, Go to its origination. Go to the right. beginning. Right. And like I'll try to do that with the most anything. It, right. like, even if we're talking about faith and religions or anything along those lines, go back to the beginning. Right. Go back to the very beginning because here's what can happen sometimes. The premise can be good and it got jacked up through time. Right. Like I, I like the Constitution. I'm a constitutionalist in a way. And, and I believe that the premise is good. It's just gotten jacked up through time. Right. Okay. And I think that that's not the case here. <laughs> right. Okay. I want to make this very clear. I think it was questionable from the very beginning. Right. Um, what you talked about, it was called, what, the creature from Jekyll, Jekyll Island? Yeah, the creature from Jekyll Island. And, and, and the idea Island. is that when they met together, everything about it was secretive. Yes. Everything about it So this was... guy talks about it in the video. Okay. So he's he's the guy that wrote the book, and then he did have a talk on it. And it's uh, it, I watched probably about 40 minutes out of it. It's, it's an hour and 40 minutes. Right. And I was able to get through about 40 minutes. The first time I tried, I I foolishly tried to do it at night, and then I fell asleep. Okay. So I didn't work. Is the guy just not that? No, it's just... Uh, it's the topic. I, 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 it was. You got to have a certain understanding about certain things. I had to keep no, going back. No. To, What's this mean? What are they talking about? I do so, a lot of that. A lot of times, just because once everybody comes downstairs, the day is just wide open. Uh, it's it's just constant pulling for my attention, so mm-hmm. it's really hard to focus on anything. Okay. okay. But I don't really get a chance to watch documentaries so much because it's right. hard. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, and so then a lot of times I'll try to do stuff at night, and it's a hit or miss whether or not I'm too tired to actually do anything. Okay. So I but I was actually able to listen to it a little bit. And um, he talks about so so. Here's my understanding: there's about uh, five or six um, bankers mm-hmm. that that were involved. Maybe maybe six. I think it was six. Uh, but anyway, there was a number of bankers that were uh, that were brought out to uh, Jekyll Island. Jekyll Island is over here, o- over by Florida, right, right, up, or, yep. or, yeah, by Florida in Georgia. Yep. And uh, it used to be privately owned, and it was owned by millionaires, which I think at the time would have been pretty close to billionaires. They were, they were very, very wealthy. Yes. Yep. So we're not talking about you know like a single man millionaire. You know, we're talking about like somebody that had extreme amounts of wealth mm-hmm. at the time, and they were brought in and under the, aliases. The the idea was when you come, everybody comes separate. Mm-hmm. If you happen to come across each other, don't you know pretend like you don't know each other. Um, only use your first name. So, and like two of the guys, they made up names. Yep. Um, and so it was like very secretive because they didn't want to alert the press in any which way. The press knew who some of them were, but not all of them. And so they didn't want the press to even, you know, to, to see one or two of them and start putting Put together. Put together, yep. 
Um, so then they had this meeting about what they were going to do. So I, I don't really have the details of the meeting itself, but what was interesting, and I out of that 40 minutes, because he goes and he explains kind of like how this how the Fed kind of operates. Mm-hmm. And here's like I think I can summarize it in a single sentence. Okay. Why it might actually be a bad in terms of what it's actually doing. Mm-hmm. So what he was saying is through all these processes of borrowing and lending and all this other stuff and uh, and, and the way that things are exchanging, the people that it, uh, that all of this initiates with, they they have the ability. This is more than one sentence. Sorry. Yeah, I was just saying. But I thought they, you said one sentence. But they have Joe the ability. Biden, this one. They have the they, they acquire the like one hundred percent of the purchasing power mm-hmm. of that money, but as the money kind of goes through, and I don't want to say trickle down, but as it spreads out to okay. more people, the purchasing power gets reduced yes. and reduced and reduced. Yep. So the dollar that I have that I get to spend. The purchasing power of it is a lot less than that than that dollar when it originated mm-hmm. with those at the top at the Fed, the very wealthy, um, and so they have the maximum purchasing power to do what they want with it, whereas yeah. I do not. Right. Okay. Now that's my understanding. You know, he said a lot, and it was you know I, I'm gonna right. have to listen to now, it again. Okay. But that's the gist that I got. So I I went in and I just started looking at these type of things. Okay, where is it getting from? Start to hear, bring it through the line. So um, what they were trying to do, they were trying to find a way to protect runs on banks. Okay. Yes. Okay. And so uh, if anybody doesn't understand that, the the fear was when people all of a sudden go and want all their their money out all of a sudden. And because they'd had some issues with it, they're trying to find a way to prevent it. Now, I, I think that this kind of starts looking like a possible typical government overreaction. Mm-hmm. You know, I think like, well, okay, one thing happened. Let's jump on it. We got to get, we got it. No, no, no. I think we can sometimes breathe a little bit. And so I kind of looked at maybe that's what happened. And, and so um, I, I look, I started kind of, and I'm trying to, I'm going to go through my notes a little bit. Are we good with that? Yeah. Are, are, yeah, okay. Yes, All right. Um, so here's what happened. As it started getting made up, once they got past the meeting, they're like, okay, mm-hmm. how are we going to make this map out a little bit? And so here's what they have. They have um, the president appoints a board of, a board of governors. Okay. Um, and then it, it starts breaking down into smaller banks. There are 12 federal banks, mm-hmm. okay, in a sense across the country. Mm-hmm. And, and, um, and then they, they fall down. I want to make sure I get all this right before I say it. And, and they regulate and oversee the local level banks. Mm-hmm. So everything kind of goes back to one of these 12 banks. Right. That then goes to the Federal Reserve directly. Right. Okay. If, if that it, makes sense. It's where we get the term central banking system. Yes. Okay. Everything kind There's of- a central- Yep. Uh, top here, top down, and then, and then you have your twelve. Yep, and then everything from so everything kind of everything runs back to one of these twelve, and then back to mm-hmm. the Fed itself. Okay, um, and, and so what they were doing is they're actually forcing people. They started forcing these banks. No, you have to go into this system. You don't right. have a choice anymore. Right. Um, and I think that was all part of the nineteen thirteen, the the, mm-hmm. the act of nineteen thirteen, and they start saying, okay, from now on, you don't have a choice. If you're going to run this bank. You have to, you will, like we fall under our closest federal bank that's under the 12 is in Atlanta. Atlanta covers our area. Now we actually have, don't we have a big federal reserve bank right downtown? Isn't that what that is over there? I'm not sure. Uh, I wanted to look that up and I forgot to. to. All right. So here's what happened. So then it goes into um, what they refer to as the federal open market committee is inside the fed itself. Okay. And they have seven appointed members and then they have the 12 regional banks all get a person to represent them inside the big fit, okay? And then what they do is they set all the monetary policy for the state, or for, no, sorry, for the country. They, right. they are, it's, it's basically these 19 people, hang on, there's 19 people there, but here's what I found out. Only five of them get to vote at a time. Oh, wow. Okay, and in that five, here's what happens. New York always has their person on that board. Always, New York is always one of the five. And then the other four positions are taken up by yearly seats. So huh. they kind of get rotated through out of the 19. New York is always there. The other four get rotated on an annual basis and only five are ever voting at any given time. So I start looking at this and go, wait a minute. So it's not really that they represent everybody. They're just representing the ones who at that time happen to be, and you hope that they care about the others. Doesn't always happen. Now, can I keep going? Let's go. Oh, okay. Let's All right. It. Because like I said, I, it aggravated me, but I'm like, wait a minute. So here's what happens. To keep in line with our previous comments, 
Preach, brother, preach. Got it. Okay. Now, well, I hope I preach better than this stuff here. All right. So, so after all of this plays out a little bit, I started looking at, okay, well, what makes them want to function? What's their gain mm -hmm. out of setting all of this? Okay. So here's what happened. The federal government receives all the funds after the payouts. It's all theirs now. Okay. So here's what they do. In 2015, the, the Fed, okay, earned, I'm sorry, the government earned $100.2 billion. They transferred $97.7 .7 which means the Federal Reserve in 2015 kept $2.5 billion. Just the reserve. After they kicked it, got all the money in, kicked it back to where it's supposed to be, we kept, the Fed kept $2.5 billion. Mm -hmm. Now you start looking at that. Okay, wait a minute. Why do they get to keep it? They have their portion of the cutout. Uh, in 2020, even though everything was crazy, the Fed, the Federal Reserve themselves, sitting there chilling, kept $1.7 billion. So I started going like, okay, wait a minute. So how I started looking. I said, okay, so what does that mean to us? Like, Because this all seems crazy. It's like, okay, what's all that? Right. So as I started looking, I'm like, wait a minute. Does that mean then that technically all loans that you get from a bank are basically the government? Okay. Because everything runs back. Your local bank mm -hmm. has to go back to your local area region, Federal Reserve Bank, which then goes up. So I'm like, this is all, you understand that when you go get a home loan at your local bank, you're technically, you're putting your hands into government. Right. That's what's happening with this. Right. So it's filtering its way all the way down. Um, and then here's the problem though. So we'll look at this and we'll go, oh, see the government's involved. But the government is very limited because here's the funny thing. The Federal Reserve is not federal, nor is it reserving anything. Right. Like it's not doing either one of those two things. Right. Because they actually are not governed by the government. Right. They, in fact, they're over the, the, the government oversight over the Federal Reserve is minimal. Right. At best. And I think that we have been guilty. We've kind of been trained up. We think we hear federal. So we think, oh, it's government. And right. I think many people don't question that. And they go, oh, it's the government. No. Technically, it's just a few guys in that sense right. that are running and doing all of this. So here's what I started looking at. So with their independence, um, okay, they got their own freedoms. Don't I don't like it because there's really nobody to kind of be like, hey, dude, this is a bad idea. Y'all just robbing from all of us. Right. Okay. So um, the Federal Reserve Act. Okay, that's what began the Fed. Actually, I think that's what began the income tax. Also, it was the same thing. Okay. Bad year, 1913. Right. Was a bad year yeah. for that. Um, and so here's what happens. So they have the Federal Reserve Act, and the only thing that government can do is they can basically modify that act. That's it. They can't do anything specifically against the Federal Reserve because they don't fall under that. They can only modify the act, okay, which they don't seem to want to do. Like, politicians stay away. I've realized they tend to leave the Federal Reserve alone. They might mouth off a little bit, but as a whole... They don't mess with it so much. You know what I'm saying? They don't even try to. Um, so he, here's what I found. Um, what they were doing when they started the, the Federal Reserve Act, it was forcing all of those banks. You don't have a choice anymore. You have to fall into this system now. If you're going to function, the government said, if you want to start your own bank, mm -hmm. uh, what was it? Uh, it's a Wonderful Life, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's what it was. Remember that Christmas movie? Remember that's what was happening. If you look at what was happening inside, of them, remember that was a privately owned bank, mm -hmm. and what their idea was. Remember they had to run on the bank. Remember they came right. and they wanted everybody wanted their money. Like, what are we going to do? Right. And they didn't know what to do. And that, at that point, and they're saying that this was kind of the idea behind that. And, and all it really turns into, it's like the government mafia inside the banking system. Right. Like they found their way in. And look at I got that really cool graphic. It's not going to do us any good here. And all it really does is shows who goes where, who does what, how mm -hmm. it fits under the thing. Oh, it's in that or whatever. So. Now, on all of our money, it says Federal Reserve Note on there. Mm -hmm. And so we tend to think, okay, that's our, but it's not the government. So you understand, it's this private entity, because they're technically kind of private, that holds all the money from the government. Right. Like, you understand, none of our money is issued from the government. All of our money is basically issued because, hang on, I, got all, I don't want to get this wrong. The Bureau of Engraving and Printing prints the money only at the behest and the request of the Federal Reserve. So here's what happens. The Federal Reserve says, okay, we got the money now. And the government says, well, we want to borrow some of that money. Because right. you know, it's interesting what happens. When, when they say we're in deficit, we're basically only in deficit to the Federal Reserve. Like right. we owe the Federal Reserve money. And it's funny because nobody can really say, well, who's the Federal Reserve? Ask anybody, who's the Federal Reserve? Even these people who are way too, they're like, well, you know, they're kind of this banking group. And there's no good, real right. solid answer of who they are. So 
when we look at it, I go, okay, so we're going to basically take our money that they're taking, they're putting it into here, and as it gets printed, it's not printed by the government, it's mm -hmm. printed by this company but at the behest of the Federal Reserve. Now, here's what happens. The Fed will agree to print more money based on the requests of Congress government. Okay. They say they basically basically when they pat when Congress is spending bill, it's gonna go negative. All they're really doing is they're gonna now, once they approve it, they're gonna to go to the Federal Reserve. And the Federal Reserve is basically then going to determine are we going to print it or not. Right. And then technically they do because once they do that, guess what happens? Now Countries more in debt to them again. So every time the Federal Reserve is really kind of, they're holding all of this money. They go, you know, at some point the Federal Reserve could call in this debt. Do you understand? Like, if you think about that, that this group of people that are, we can't really understand could call in a debt that would completely bankrupt our country. Completely. Right. Now, I, I don't know what the benefit would be because they still have the assets of things and, and come to find out they're actually taking an amount of money in there. And they're running it, and they're running it in other countries. Like they're putting out loans to other countries mm -hmm. in the Federal Reserve and stuff along those lines. So here's what happens. So as they come and they say, "Hey, we want to print this," and the Federal Reserve goes, "Okay, this is the part that everybody's complaining about now," because everybody mentions that as as they print more money, it loses its value. Mm -hmm. And people say that, and they're like, "What, what do you mean?" Because it only matters when you have X amount of dollars. If 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 I only have X amount of one dollar bills, well, I want one of those one dollar bills. Now when they print out countless $1 bills. You want a $1 bill? I got a $1 bill. Right. What do I care? Right. That's what happens. Right. It's the idea that as you keep printing money, it now it's losing its value because right. all they're doing is printing it without anything because it's not worth anything. You no anymore. longer have scarcity. Yeah. Everybody's getting it. Right. And there's nothing to it. Nobody's earning it. It's just getting printed out. And, and the, they're not holding the thing. So they're over right. there in the Federal Reserve's going, yeah, print it out. We don't care. Right. So add that. Now I'm going to look, I'm probably going to get down to the end of my notes. Look, I'm right, uh, I, I, I'm right here. So here's the thing. Ultimately, the Federal Reserve controls the money, mm -hmm. the money, and they ultimately control the economy. Right. Because they get to decide whether money will be released. Right. They're basically determining the value of the dollar. Right. And, and they could ruin our country on a whim. Right. You know, the Federal Reserve, because because as I started going through, yeah, I had other stuff and everything. So they've only been audited, halfway audited once right. since 1913. Nobody can get access to go in and say, where are you spending your money at? Where is all this at? They don't have access and nobody's ever done it. Right. So we don't exactly know what the Federal Reserve is doing. We just know that they hold all the debt and all the money right. of the country. Take all that. Did you get all that, folks? You are experts now on no. the Federal Reserve. You know what? You know what I hate about this? They, that's a portion. Like even that doesn't fully understand right. explain the system. Right. Like I'm and, still walking away going, wait a minute. So what's interesting is you were talking about, you know, um, uh, you know, they've never either they've never been fully audited. Mm -hmm. And um the author of that book, when he was talking in that video, he says that he doesn't believe that the Fed should be audited because he thinks that if you audited the Fed, uh -huh. you're gonna find out that it's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Right? Like and and but what it's supposed to be doing is not what people think it's supposed to be doing. Oh, right. Okay. They think it's supposed to be managing and maintaining the money supply, whereas they're actually interrupting it in, uh -huh. in, and getting in, you know, in, intervening in some way um, for for purposes. Now, I think I, I didn't watch the whole video, but it seemed to say that uh, that one of the driving reasons that they that these bankers got together was to solve some actual banking problems that right. they were having at the time. Yep. One of those being like that they were having trouble, uh, uh, you know, making sure that they had their proper money when they needed, when people needed it. Mm -hmm. So I guess that would be the runs on the, the runs bank. Of the bank. Like people mm -hmm. came and said, "Hey, we want our money." Then the bank's like, "Okay, well, we don't have it right now." So they were trying to they were trying to solve some actual problems that they were having. Mm -hmm. Of course, in the process of solving this problem, they solved the problem for themselves, yes. not for the people themselves first. I think, right? Because uh -huh. think about it: if, if if I'm a business and I'm having a problem delivering to you mm -hmm. i'm going to solve the problem as it pertains to, to me, me. Mm -hmm. right so that will probably in most cases mean that i solve your problem as well mm -hmm. but it's not always the case sometimes businesses solve problems that fix their end of the their, their it just end causes another problem down the, the line. contract but doesn't help the other person mm -hmm. right and and so I think this is kind of what happened. Now again, I'm not an expert on the Fed, <laughs> right? Just, but not not even not, not even anywhere close. But just in this 40 minutes, you know, I I think I got a lot out okay. of this. 
And um, I'm actually going to be watching it again and, okay. and then finishing it hey, up. Feel free to send me that link. But he, uh, I'll check that out. But he um, he said that he feels the Fed should simply simply be abolished. Mm -hmm. And he gave seven reasons. Okay. Now, I didn't get to the part of the, vi the film where he get, got into the seven reasons why. But um, if I can remember them correctly, one of them was it uh, it ca uh, it leads to war. It, 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 to it, shut it down? No, no. The, the having the Fed in existence. Oh, okay, okay. Leads right. to, contributes to war. Um, but again, I haven't gotten into why. Okay. Um, what else did he say? Man, that might be the only one I remember now. But there were seven different reasons that he gave. Uh, one was it, they can't they they cannot accomplish even their own stated reason for existence. Now, I don't know what that means because, again, we didn't get into the seven. Right. He was just kind of giving an, an outline of like, okay, let's talk about the introduction of this system, like these how these guys met. And then he starts going into, he goes, okay, let's talk about That's what, what, I the, would like what the Fed that. does, mm -hmm. where he's talking about. Because he goes into this like analogy and he's like, all right, you know, the government wants a loan, so they do this. And he talks about it like if you get $10, then, the, then somebody has like $90 that they can loan off of or something. I don't know. He, okay. he was going into some numbers, but the ultimate result after he said all that and then he kind of summarized it, kind of sounded to me that it was an issue of who gets the most purchasing power out of That's, that dollar right. as it moves around. And they, the, the Fed the and the start. government, the Fed and the government are the ones that get the maximum amount of purchasing power from every dollar. Whereas somebody like me, the man on the street, the purchasing power it's that been I get, as it's, it's gone been down reduced the line. as it's gone mm -hmm. down the line. And so it sounded like to him, in a more free market currency system, tie back. you uh -huh. would not have this this kind of um, power dynamic yeah. where one entity is having all of the purchasing power, all the purchasing power, and, and another is not. Like you understand that they hold all of the control of the power. Right. And you know they can't even produce all the money right. that they're supposedly. You, you understand right. what I'm saying? That and, and by just for for the record, yeah, purchasing power, folks. If you're not familiar with it, it's just the most simple definition is simply going to be, what can you get for your dollar? Yep. That, that's really, that's as simple as that. What can you get for your dollar? So think of it like this. The Fed, the government gets more for every dollar they spend than you do, do get, than you get. And I don't mean more that goes to the citizens. Somehow, I, and, and, and this is where I start getting into that area where I'm not equipped enough to have the conversation. Right. But just based on what I heard so far. They got more purchasing power than I got. So, right here, like, I, I kept two articles up. One was this one. I'll look at the other one. And this one here was actually explaining. I'm going to get the title as they did it right because I, I kept it up for that reason. Uh, Ten reasons to end the Federal Reserve. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe if you want to, I'll send it to you. Maybe when you post this, maybe yep. we can just post a link to it. Yep. Let's yep. just we'll... do that. I won't get into it. Um, So, I have this one. And I have, actually, I have another one that once you post this, uh, I guess that one right there. Um, Once you post it. This, oh, actually, you know what? I'll try to remember. I'll do it. Um, once you post this, I'll try to go through and put these links in. Okay. So these well, you can send them to me and I'll put them in the show notes. Oh, okay. Have you, okay. So yeah, I'll, I'll put them in the show notes and then I'll put the link to the video that I watched in the show notes as well. Oh, good. Okay. So it'll all be right there. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So what I want to do is like I said, I had those two articles. I, I'll get them out yep. so, so that I don't have to sit here and go over them because right. it lays, it actually lays out the other one, just so I can re kind of remind myself also was, um, it was. 11 reasons why the Fed Reserve is bad. Okay. So the other one was 10 why you should get rid of it. And this one here was 11. There's a lot of information inside of this article. That, and because I, I think that he's explaining, hey, this is what the Fed does. Right. This is why it's bad. But I don't think he's doing it biased. I don't think he's right. like, I think the Fed's horrible. And I'm just going to tell you all these. No, I think he kind of lays it out pretty well. Okay. And I got a ton of information out of this. Um, So I'll just remember. Right. When you do that, well, I'll post these two articles. I have that people can kind of read through it a little bit. I end up pulling stuff. There's no shortage of information right. about the Fed. Right. But, you know, it's it's still, there's a lot of people still just don't, they can't fully explain it. Right. And I think maybe that's the scary part of it. Well, like, I think we, part of it is um, it's it's not part of any government program. So, therefore, there's nobody in the government that ever is held accountable for it. And you've got a small number of people that are voting on it. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about the entirety of the U.S. market. And you're talking about like bonds and debt and trading and all this other stuff. So you're talking about all these complexities mm -hmm. that most people don't generally don't. have a conversation about don't. on a daily basis. And uh, like even right here, they're talking about because how they set the interest rates. Mm -hmm. And and I'm like, okay. So, and, I, and honestly, I was reading through this. I go, oh, that's why that matters. I didn't put a whole lot of thought into it. Who do, they said they can... 
they can kind of manipulate the market one way or the other, however they see it best, honestly, for themselves. Because right. when they put out an interest rate, we just go along with it. Because right. you know why? The banks don't have a choice. It's right. filtered down through their own system. Right. And so once that happens, they can manipulate however they want. And what happens is, as I was reading through all, all this stuff that's there, once they do that, uh, markets react. Mm -hmm. And they start going, okay, we can start doing this. People start selling things, buying things, whatever, and it starts right. changing things. So they can change it all on their own. And if you right. think about it, they can be looking at that going, hey, we're going to buy over here. Let's manipulate this way. That's very dangerous because what I started realizing, this is not just a Federal Reserve Bank thing. This is a Wall Street thing. This is a stocks and trades thing. Like this goes very deep. Mm -hmm. How far the manipulation and the darkness, I think, goes. This, right. the, just the, we don't fully understand all of it. And I don't think we, going through this, I don't think we fully understand the depths Right. Of all of it. I, I don't think maybe we I don't even think we even realize how much the Federal Reserve actually right. hits our daily lives. Right. And how we do things. Yeah. So um, I don't feel better after this one because, you know, libertarians are big on the Federal Reserve. They and are. The Fed they and, are. And it's been something that I've often wondered about. Yeah. Like, OK, what's the big deal with the Fed? Like, all I understood was, OK, the Fed is not a federal agency and it, it's not really reserving. They're anything. reserving anything. Okay. Right. Like, OK, but. But what does but that what? really mean? Like, you know, like that doesn't mean anything to me, and, and, you know? And so I, and so you just watch in 40 minutes and I was like, holy wow. Like I, I have 10 times better understanding yep. than I did before. And I've only cracked 40 minutes worth That's, of information, you, right? One day, a little while back when we first started talking about this, we were, we were like, okay, Federal Reserve's coming up at some right. point. And, and so I was kind of like, right, so I started watching some of it, but I, I, I was watching, I tried to be more entertaining ones, I think, you know, like watch seven or eight minutes here, seven or eight minutes there. And they would cover stuff, be like, okay, but I would never be able to walk away going, oh, okay, God, like I'd learn parts. Okay, mm -hmm. like even doing this here. This is probably one of the ones I've had to research the most because I didn't know the most on the topic. Right. So I really had to kind of read things and kind of, that's why my notes are all jumbled. I just kind of guess like, I want to hold on to that. I want to hold on to right, that. Right. And, but the idea by is kind of to get into it a little bit. There's going to be a lot more study on this. There's a lot more to get into right. in this, a lot more than what we just covered. Right. Um, but the more I get into it, the more I go, this is just a mess. Right. Like this is just pretty jacked up and it's not getting better. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I can't go back and what I said at the beginning Go back to the beginning. Right. And so this is not a system that lost its way. Right. I think this was a system that was intended to do exactly what it's doing. Right. That this small group would have full say of what goes on in right. the economy of the United States. Right. And, and we just follow along with it, not right. realizing. And, and I don't think it's nefarious in the more conspiratorial sense. No, where, I think, I think where, it's... Where people tend to... They come up with these conspiracies and they're like, oh, man... They're trying to rule the world and everybody bow down to this one person. I don't think it's they quite to make money. Way. Yeah, I think it's it. I think they wanted to make money. I think these bankers came together and they said, look, we got some problems, legitimate problems. How do we solve them in our favor? Yeah. And that's what we came up with. And it is still in their favor. And it remain. It, it was it, in, their favor. It more, more in, in their favor. It remains in their favor. And it gets more and more in their favor. Mm -hmm. Now, would is it fair to say that maybe they didn't know the degree, like where it would go 100 years later? It's possible. They, they, they might have just been looking at it from a pure, simple, how do we make money and stay on top? And according to the uh, the, the guy I was watching, mm -hmm. he basically was saying they created a cartel. Right. Cartel meaning um, a group of people that come together and say, all right, we are going to, um, we're going to maintain the environment, keep other, you know, elbow people out. Uh, that we don't want in, mm -hmm. and we're going to basically keep control and keep our dominance. And so, so it's a way of keeping, uh, maintaining market dominance. Yep. Now, this is where, and we're not going to get into it, but this is where cryptocurrencies oh, may come in uh -huh. because cryptocurrencies may be able to usurp this. There are some people that really, really believe so. Other people don't think so. I'm not really sure. I don't know a whole lot about right. cryptocurrencies, um, nor do I know enough about the, the, the Fed and the market to really say how cryptocurrencies, but there is a, a large number of people, there are a large, or there is a large number of people that believe that um, that cryptocurrencies could upset this and, and, and change And why things. they think there's a, a an intentional um, kind of, I want to say sabotage the system. Right. That, that they would rather not allow right. this crypto coin stuff to right. fall into place because it goes completely against them. Right. And if I understand it, and if I understand it all, all like, yeah, I get it. You got a you got a wife and a kid, or a husband and a kid, or whatever. You got a family, and you've got things to do, right? You know. So I understand you're not gonna sit around and spend no. four hours and researching. Don't. Like the just, Federal oh Reserve. my goodness. So to simplify it, why should you even care? Because at the end of the day, the idea simply is the 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 money that you're spending. You don't have 
the amount, the power, the purchasing power from that money that you should have, because it's been taken from you long before you ever received it. So that's why a dollar isn't necessarily worth a dollar from when you were 15. Do you know, they said that um, a, do a dollar now versus a dollar to 1913, right before all this started, um, it's, we now have 5%. The, the oh. five cents is basically the equivalent to the, that's how it's much wow. has dropped off since all of this. Is. Right. So it's, it's going by what you're saying. Right. The dollar is worth a dollar, for right. example, and now the equivalent is five cents. Right. And it's just through time. And, but here's the, here's the question. And, I and, and what's being, what he said in this video is that it shouldn't change that much. No. Over time. Like the cost or, or, or if anything, it might in some ways go up, right? Because we, we learn how to produce things at mass quantities. And so then therefore there, there's a less, there's lesser of a cost involved mm -hmm. in it. So, but it's not really your, your, your dollar that's changing value. What's changing is the, um, the cost of producing certain right. things, you know? Um, but instead the cost of producing things has went down as has the value of a dollar. dollar. So it all kind make of makes sense. it stay the same. It should have at least stayed the same. Mm -hmm. So here, here's my question. I think maybe this is what you were getting into, and I don't even expect an answer, to be honest with you. This is just me putting it I've, out there. I think I've given, it, given okay. everything I, I got. Th that's what I'm saying, is that this is a train wreck. Let's, let's just be honest. The, and the more, and I will. I'm going to keep reading up, because now it's one of those things. Right. Wait a minute. Wh why? Who knows? Maybe we'll do a part two one day. Maybe. Uh, just wait a while. Right. All right. But inside us, is the Fed almost too big to, fail. to get rid of? Oh, mm -hmm. to fail. To fail. Yeah, same thing. Um, Maybe. And hopefully, if what you're saying is true, that well, that the what? Fed has the money if? and it's not the government that has the money, mm -hmm. then there is nobody to bail them out. Right. Unless you're talking about like a global. Mm -hmm. So we'll leave it at that. Hopefully that's not a little too ominous for you, folks. That's, hey, that's, that's so a good point to do we'll it right see. there. But um, oh. with that, wait, let's wait, wait, go wait. ahead okay. and close out. And that is all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And what I want you to is do, it like down, where is it on YouTube? Like down do I do this here down, somewhere, right there. You know, just okay, look for right it down there. there. Did, you, did you see it? Yep, you saw it. Right, you got it. that guy got it right there. There. Um, and then what I want you to do, I want you to connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook and Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, or send me an email, hate mail, love mail, whatever, to Liberty Dad Podcast at gmail.com because I would love to hear from you. Tub, where can they find you? They can, well, the first they could say, they could send you an email to the Liberty Dad podcast at Gmail. Say, I really miss Tub. Where, where is he at? That, that's right. fine. Um, I'm on Facebook, unfortunately. Tub where, for Jacks. Tub for Jacks. Tub, tub for Jacks. F, uh, not F. Tub for the number four Jacks, right? No, it's F-O-R. Oh, is it F-O-R? Yeah. Uh, it must be one of the other. One well, of the no, other. Here, no, here's what's funny. It's one of the other candidates must have a four. There okay. are no other. There are no other tub fours. Let's clear that up. All right. I mean, so, what are the other? Yes. Well, here's candidates. what's funny. My website is tubforjacks.com, okay. but you can use F O R or the number. Four. Oh, okay, okay. So, so you can tub do either. for jacks. However, um, F O R or the number four. But uh, I bet he didn't get F O U R. Jacks. Okay, so we're still working on him being a good candidate, but catch up Let's, with one or both of us. You know, and, at this point right here, I don't even know why you would bother reaching out to you. Like, remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people. See, we're people. We're people. We're people. And your product is liberty. And we are your liberty. business. Have a great week. Catch you next time. And we're out.